Hello and welcome to today's IWCS webinar. My name is Connie and I'll be in the background answering any WebEx technical questions. I am now pleased to turn the webinar over to Ed Fenton, your IWCS moderator. Ed, please go ahead. Thank you, Connie. Our IWCS webinar series event is hosted by the International Cable and Connectivity Symposium. I am Ed Fenton, a cable industry advisor working with the IWCS team. As Connie said, if you have questions, please use the Q&A box in the bottom right of your screen to post the question anonymously. If you wish to contact the presenter or IWCS after the presentation, you will be given the contact points at the end. Please note that IWCS does not distribute the presentation slides for either our conference sessions or these webinars. However, please feel free to contact the presenter directly and they will respond individually to you. Today, we welcome Paul Devin, Fellow in Cable and Process Development for OFS Vital in Georgia, USA, who will be presenting his paper on Development of High-Density Loose Tube Cables Incorporating Rollable Ribbon Units. Paul Devin is an OFS Fellow in Cable and Process Development for OFS in Carrollton, Georgia. He has more than 35 years experience in optical fiber cable manufacturing and development. He holds multiple patents for fiber optic cable constructions and is a past co-recipient of the Jack M. Spurgle Memorial Award from the IWCS. Paul, we welcome you today to present at today's IWCS webinar series event. Thank, thank you, Ed. Um, I'm pleased to be here. Uh, this uh, paper was originally presented at the IWCS as, um, for paper 10-2. I've also thrown in a couple of slides at the end from paper 14-3 from Dr. Annabelle Scarpacci of OFS. Um, let's get into this. So the, so the outline today, um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about rollable ribbon, and that'll be my primary focus is the, the pr problems that rollable ribbon solves and why it's such an exciting development. Then I'll show a little bit about um, its application in loose tube, and finally I'll, I'll show a couple slides on its use in a central tube indoor cable. So, um, rollable ribbon is very exciting to me as a cable cable designer. Um, as we're looking at rollable ribbon and the uses of it, um, rollable ribbon looks like a hammer and almost every cable design problem looks like a, a nail that we, we keep finding more applications for the rollable ribbon subunit. Its advantages are that inside the cable structure itself, it acts as if you just had loose fibers in the cable. So you can have a very high density core. The cable can be very flexible as if you were using loose fibers and you can make cables, there's minimal preferential bending of the ribbons in the cable. But yet when you strip the cable and expose the ribbons outside, you have all the advantages of unit identification and mass fusion splicing. Um, so you get the best of both worlds. Okay, I'm going to jump right in with a, an image of a loose tube cable with rollable ribbons inside. This image is of a 1728 fiber cable. If you attended last month's session, um, this image will look very similar because a very similar photograph was used last month for, for the presenter's paper. But um, so by applying rollable ribbons to the loose tube cable structure, we're able to double the fiber density of the essentially the same cable structure. For example, the 1728 fiber cable pictured on the left is the same dimensions and structure as the previous 864 fiber cable. Um, so the in the service provider with the same duct can put twice as many fibers with the same installation, installation techniques and training. 
but when you take this cable and you you take a unit tube and you ring cut the units, it's to to me anyway, it seems almost like magic because you know, when you look at a cross section, if you don't look very closely, you really can't see individual ribbons. They look like loose fibers. But when you cut the cable and you know, ring cut, pull off the tube and you know just lay the ribbons out on a desk like I did here. Um, they look just like the flat ribbons we've known for the last uh, 30 plus years, almost 40 years, and if you include tape ribbons before the current bonded structures. <clears throat> so now I'm going to describe the rollable ribbons that I'm um, talking about in this paper. Um, these are 12 fiber ribbons following the North American color sequence from from blue to aqua. Uh, they're print, printed just like normal um, flat ribbons used in North America and and around the world. Um, every ribbon has the same color code, um, but they're easily identifiable with non-contact with non-contact printing that's been applied. And you can use the ribbon in just about any cable structure where you would use either loose fibers or flat ribbons. Um, one advantage of this structure, it, you know, the, the joints are applied in a net-like pattern and they don't add to the ribbon thickness. So you're really looking at the cross-sectional area of the fibers when you're calculating the, the density. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time on how rollable ribbons, how you can double, allow us to double the density of any given um, optical fiber cable design. And the, this seems so intuitive to most cable designers that in past papers it's, we, we kind of skip over it, but I thought I'd spend a minute on it. First of all, with the flat ribbons, what I'm showing here, well, let me back up one moment. So there are two, two things that rollable ribbon addresses. It's just the fiber packing in the tube and the preferential bending of the ribbon itself. So let's start with fiber packing. On the right image, I just laid out a 144 ribbon stack with with standard flat ribbons. So we have 12, 12 fiber ribbons just stacked up. Um, we're literally putting a, a rectangle in a round hole. So the, you know, the area in the tube that the ribbon stack takes is, is the diagonal of the stack. And so we look, we're, we look at the cross-sectional area of this circle as the area inside the tube that the ribbon stack takes because the ribbon stack is twisted as it's processed. To the left here, I have 144 fibers laid out with the same dimensions as on the right. I decided for my layout to start with three, go to nine, and then just keep adding six fibers to, to each layer till I got up to 144. So, and, and uh, I've also looked at this starting with one and going to six, and and the buildup really does, it doesn't really matter what model I use. This isn't the tightest packing because there's no nesting in this model, but I've tested this model by running rollable ribbons through metal dies, and it it seems like a, a reasonable model for the cross-sectional area of the fibers and rollable ribbons. So if I take the ratio of the um, circle inscribed by a rectangular ribbon stack versus the um, circle of just fibers starting at nine around three and, and building out and, and just compare the cross-sectional area, the number comes up to be somewhere around two. You know, like, like I said, it about doubles 
you know, a squarish stack like a 144 or a 576, which is 24 by 24, that, um, you know, that's, that's about one point, a little over 1.8. If you get a very rectangular stack like a 4 by 12, you know, the ratio be, you know, or um, 36 by 24 and an 8, 864, the ratio gets above 2. But in general, it, it's somewhere around two. Um, you know, it, it, it's approximately two. So you could say, well, you know, you can get twice as many fibers because you're just filling the corners of the circle. And and there's a and that's that's part of it. The other part is the preferential bending of the ribbons themselves. So. Um, Traditional flat ribbons only bend in one plane. Um, when you're do, looking for fiber curvature in a um, in a tube, you'll use a we we often use a um, sinusoidal mo model or some other model that models the curvature of the ribbon in a single plane. In, in contrast, if you were doing um, looking at fiber curvature in a uh, of loose fibers in like a loose in a central tube or a um, or or a loose loose tube you know central tube uh, cable or a loose tube cable, you can use a helical model, which is more of a three dimensional model. And that's probably a better model of the fiber curvature for a single fiber that can bend in any plane. It doesn't have any. So, um, and, and that's an important consideration in the um, strain window and fiber density of, of fibers in a tube. So you have to be more conservative with flat ribbons. The other thing is the bend st stiffness of the ribbon. Um, you know, the, the amount it really wants to be in one plane is um, is really a function of it's not just proportional to the width. It goes up with the cube of the width because you're really looking at the moment of inertia of the ribbon. So if I if I take a four fiber ribbon and just set its moment of inertia to one, um, and a four four fiber ribbons can often be treated almost like loose fibers. With if you compare a four to an eight fiber ribbon, that factor goes up to eight. A twelve fiber ribbon it goes up to twenty seven. A twenty four fiber ribbon compared to the four, its factor goes up to two sixteen. And I didn't put a thirty six fiber ribbon in here because it, the scale would be it would mess up the scale. So um, it'll only, you know, a ribbon will only bend in one plane. To get it to change directions, you've got to make it twist. And um, when um, you put a stack of ribbons in a cable, they act like stacked plates, usually unless you take um, special care of those stacked plates can slide against each other. So um, the slide 13, I'm rushing through here. Um, this is from a very old internal mem memo. It's so old that Microsoft Paint was the state-of-the-art graphics package we used to document what we saw. But we just made a clear, clear tube put a, a uniformly twisted ribbon stack in the tube. And, you know, cablers spend, have these very nice machines that put very uniform twists in the ribbon stack as the cable's manufactured. But you take that ribbon stack in the tube and you start bending that cable or tube around either a take-up drum or a storage coil in the field that ribbon stack doesn't stay nicely twisted. Um, the twist foreshortens what we saw in this, in this study was that the, um, the ribbons shown here on the left 
start bending until they can't bend anymore. They'll hit the tube wall, do a quick half twist um, from your from the lay length. Keep on going. You'll see an S bend from a combination of the excess fiber length and length differential between the ribbons as they go around the curve. And this is this is something that um, cable designers and cable manufacturers are constantly or are, are very concerned with because this is where with flat ribbon cables we're we're very concerned with corner loss, and this is this stack hitting the corners is pretty much um, with the roughness of the tube where it where it happens. So the tube needs enough clearance to leave room for this twist without putting too much pressure on the fibers. The tube wall needs to be very smooth so that you don't get micro bending loss. Um, this is this is. Um, you know, so in addition to just having room for that rectangular stack, you need room for this um, this behavior inside the tube. And what really brought that out for me is I was working on a um, binding process for a, a, a bundle of rollable ribbons um, for a central tube cable. And as I was taking the the bundle off the machine, the ribbons lay very nicely in a nice loop, which after working with flat ribbons for years and years, that was very surprising to me. Or, um, very. So what I did or what we did is we took, we went and got some flat ribbons from our stock and ran them through the same machine in the same bundles. And here I'm laying them on the table side by side, um, trying to make this bundle look like this bundle. And, um, you know, from the same thing I showed in the slide before, the, the flat ribbons just do not want to lay nicely. You'll, you know, they want to be straight and then they'll twist over and you get this thing going on where, where you, since the ribbons didn't follow the same path length, the bundle starts to come apart and, and it just looks kind of ugly. And that's something that in addition to some, um, inside the cable, we also have to um, take care of the, you know, the end users have to dress the five, the ribbons in a closure in order to accommodate this kind of behavior. They've got to route each ribbon one by one on edge. So, so to, to further look at this, I just took my graphic package again and tried to lay out some a stack of ribbons in bending. So with the graphics package, I set all these arcs to the same length, and you get because there's different radiuses as you, as you're going around the curve, the arcs you know you, you get this offset here, and if you um, do something like put a binder or, or do something else to to constrain the ribbon stack, you'll get. You know, you intentionally want to bend the ribbon stack this way, right adjacent to it. It'll it'll bend back the opposite direction. Um, uh, back in, um, uh, I took engineering long enough ago that I had drafting class. We had something called an English curve that had um, flat plates inside a, a sheath. And it would do this that you know you bend it one way because the flat plates inside it would take a, a nearly identical bend in the opposite direction, and that's just just a function of, of having ribbons. To overcome this, you need to you know you need to do you you need to twist the ribbons, which will increase the normal force to keep them from coming apart. It will also 
it also helps equalize the length between the ribbons on the outside and the inside. So here I am in a rollable ribbon um, cable presentation, and I'm spending a lot of time talking about flat ribbons because these are the problems that using rollable ribbon address. So, um, you know, here's a an alternate method um, that that we tried. The patent date is 20 years ago, 1999, where we tried to encapsulate ribbon stacks with the sheath. Our thought was by encapsulating it, we would isolate the corners from hitting the tube wall, and we would allow the the subunits to nest together a little bit and, and improve our density. But this ha this unit had a lot of handling difficulties because of the preferential bending of the ribbons. And uh, we, we worked on it for a couple of years after this, trying to correct the issues, never could. Um, then it became 2001 and the market crashed and, and the whole effort was abandoned. But, but this, this was one uh, a previous effort. We, we tried to, to increase fiber density, but um, we just abandoned it because we were unhappy with the, um, with, the fi with the handling mostly and the attenuation. Going back, you know, leaving the flat ribbon world and going back to the rollable ribbon world, here on slide 17. Um, so with with the rollable ribbons, there we no longer have the corner fibers, which in reeled cable or, or field storage we get improved routing of the ribbons and splice closures. And uh, we can double the fiber density of existing cable structures, so we can use existing cable structures that service providers are are familiar with to, to increase their value. And uh, so we have, and, and we have lower storage coil density. So, looking at the loose tube ribbon cable that I pictured earlier. This is the cable application. Um, over here on the right, um, this is a picture of a manhole in a big U.S. city um, in the middle of the street, in the middle of the night, where the splice closures have been pulled out of the manhole and, and, and put on the street. So this is a shared, shared space um, between different service providers, different ca ca cables um, for maintenance. It, people have, you know, contractors have to open this up, find the right cable, do what they need to do, um, and stuff it back in. So this is a very challenging application. You need a very robust cable with minimal preferential bending. and what the service providers have found is that loose tube ribbon cables have been the optimum for meeting this this environment, and that's what they're you know that's what they're interested in. For this, they they need to be able to access fibers quickly, do mass fusion splicing, do it, and get the cable back in the street before morning rush hour after working on them in the middle of the night. Um, the duct is already there. It's generally an inch and a quarter duct. Um, it, it, anyway, it, so if we go to slide 19, um, so we basically, by using the rollable ribbon structure, we took the previous loose tube cable structure that the customers are familiar with, pulled out the gel, pulled out the flat ribbons, put rollable ribbons in along with dry um, dry water blocking and using dry water blocking techniques, we could um, give the customer um, twice the twice double the number of fibers and the cable 
from the contractor's point of view looks pretty almost the same and uses the same techniques same and we can as a cable builder we can manufacture this cable with the same equipment without a huge um, capital investment so it's a win for the cable manufacturer and it's a win for the service provider so looking at these cables um, this is a um, violin chart of the added attenuation during standard GR20 temperature cycling. 90% um, of the fibers need to be below 0.05, 100% of below 0.15 per GR20. This is absolutely the same data in maybe a more familiar box plot format. Um, but anyway, it has excellent, these cables have excellent environmental results. Um, and they meet, meet the applicable requirements for impact, compression. Um, like I said, this is made for us, this loose tube cable is made for a challenging environment. So even under 1,000 pounds or, or uh, 44, 48 Newton tensile strength, there's only 0.06% fiber strain. Um, it, it's a very, robust and rugged design for a, for a challenging application. In addition to the um, standard testing I just showed, we've also done some extended testing because um, the minimum bend radius in the GR20 or, or TIA testing doesn't completely capture um, added attenuation as the cables put in storage coils in the field. So um, this test is described in paper, our base paper 10.2, where we um, take cable and we coil it up in a series of um, smaller and smaller coils. And uh, for the loose tube cable, we're rating the cable storage diameter based on the cable diameter. We want to be as conservative as possible. I have also have a, a flat ribbon cable described here on this table. Uh, we using a cable a central core construction that's designed for flexibility and coiling. With the 144 fiber count cable, we've gone from a storage coil diameter of 22 inches or 560 millimeters down to 250 millimeters using rollable ribbons. Now we've, you know, that's with a smaller cable diameter, 10 instead of 13, but um, we've more than, um, we've cut the storage coil diameter in this test by more than a factor of two. In addition, if compared to flat ribbons, if you just need to separate a single fiber out of the out of a ribbon, if you need just to branch off one or two fibers, instead of using dental floss or special splitters, you can just use your fingers and the single fibers are easily bro broken out just with, with fingers. In, um, lastly here, um, for fiber organization, going back to that coiling I showed earlier, um, this is, these are flat ribbons. We're using a double deck. Um, double height um, tray in the splice closure because the ribbons can only be on the side and need that clearance. Um, here, so this is two 288 fiber, so it's um, two sets of 12 24 fiber ribbons. Here's 288 fi two 288 fiber tubes in a single depth tray and it's 
you can see how nicely the rollable ribbons coil. And then on the left here, these are um, the, the buffer tubes stored in a standard um, cable closure. What is pictured here is we've got one 864 tubes from one 864 fiber cable and two 432 fiber cables stored in the bottom of the closure. And that's it for the loose tube cable. Here's the indoor-outdoor cable um, from, from paper 14-3. Um, I'm running at, out of time, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but this shows one last advantage of rollable ribbons, and that is um, the fuel in a flame retardant cable is, you know, the, the fuel that, cause, you know, that burns in a fiber optic cable is mostly the um, matrix on the fibers and the, and the ribbon matrix. Those are UV cured acrylates. Those are the most combustible parts of the cable. Everything else in the cable is designed for flame retardants. And rollable ribbons, at least the ribbons shown in, in this paper, have a fraction of the fuel that um, flat ribbons. So um, we can achieve very good flame retardant results. This 864 fiber cable here uh, meets the uh, um, North American riser or FT4, and also a uh, this specific one meets uh, CPR class C. So we have one cable that, um, by using rollable ribbons, we have one, one cable that can meet both, um, can be used globally in, in Europe, North America, or, or wherever. Um, and because by using the rollable ribbon structure, we can make a cable that can be wrapped or coiled to small dimensions. This is the mandrel wrap test where we are showing eight wraps of cable at a 78 millimeter radius on, on a mandrel. I, as a cable designer, I usually kind of freak out when I see a cable that big wrap that small, but that's no, no issue with this cable. And going back to the fiber density, we took a flat ribbon cable that held 432 fiber cables structure, and now it's an 864. We took a 288 structure, now it's a 576. We took a 144 structure, now it's a 288. Um, and um, you know, when you look at the number of cables you can put in a tray or the number of fibers in a tray in a data center, central office you you can put you not only you know for, you know you can put a lot more cable or make make the um, have a much more densely um, fiber dense ca cable trays in in the um, wherever you need them so in conclusion um, at least I'm really excited about rollable ribbons. It's a new tool for cable design problems. It's, it gives you know about double the fiber density um, through the packing and preferential bending. Um, we've developed some loose tube cables and some central core tube ribbon cables that take advantage of those um, properties. So here I'm going to turn it turn it over to our host for, for questions. Thank you. Paul, and thank, thank you very much. And at this time, we'll take as many questions uh, as time permits. Um, just to make sure, can you hear me clearly, Paul? Yes, I can. Good, thank you. Starting with this first question, um, considering latency, what is the fiber length tolerance for the rollable design versus a ribbon design per kilometer? Um, they're equivalent. The fibers in a flat ribbon are 
the same length and for a rollable ribbon, you know, to to make the there's very little length differential between the fibers and the ribbon, so they're basically equivalent. Okay, thank you. Next question. Are there applications where loose fibers are preferable to ribbon cable designs? Yes, yes, there there are um, there are some fibers that are extremely bend sensitive. And part of what um, we're taking advantage to is not just in these cables is not just the rollable ribbon structure itself, but improvements in bend insensitivity in fibers where A1 class fibers are becoming the, becoming the standard single mode fiber. So there are some very bend insensitive or been sensitive rather fibers that may not be appropriate for this. There are certainly, um, you know, you still have the joints. You know, it's not completely, it's almost, uh, I, I want to say it's almost the same as loose fiber, but it's not quite the same. So there, and, you know, there are cases where you don't need a whole ribbon's worth or yeah, so so yeah, there there's still still room for loose fiber construction. Okay, thank you. Next, uh, is there a defined improvement in attenuation properties of rollable ribbon versus flat ribbon or loose fiber cable designs? Well, um, loose fiber is generally the best. Um, you know, your each fiber is can find its own path within within the cable structure. Um, flat ribbons have I had, yeah, I mean, the initial deployments of flat ribbons were in the late, experimental deployments were in the late 70s, and we've had, you know, 40 years of optimization with flat ribbons where um, rollable ribbons are, are still getting off the ground, so, um, rollable ribbons are rapidly approaching the attenuation of flat ribbon structures, um, but loose fiber is still, you know, so, we, and flat ribbon is approaching loose fiber, but still, I, I would say, in my experience, you have loose fiber, flat ribbon, then for now, rollable ribbon. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, does rollable ribbon have better physical resistances and protection of the fiber than flat ribbon or loose fibers? Um, well, you, you could see from my my photograph. Let's pull. Pardon me. You know, you can see from this uh, picture on slide eight that you know the you know there are just intermittent joints between the fibers. What what you see is the fiber and the fiber coating with a few joints. So there's no intrinsic protection added or subtracted by the rollable ribbon to a loose fiber. Um, there are some ribbons out there with some pretty thick matrix coatings for you, for applications where um, more protect, where, you, where we're trying, uh, trying to add more protect, protection to the fibers, um, although I think the Standard ribbon structure is, you know, the the matrix is is kept pretty thin, so there's nothing, there's no real added protection here because we're not, you know, adding anything to the fibers and the ribbon structure itself. You know, the protection is in the cable structure. Okay. 
Uh, next, how is this rollable ribbon manufactured? Um, I'm not going to answer that directly. I'm going to, because that, there, every manufacturer of rollable ribbon has their own secret sauce, and I'm not going to talk about our secret sauce. But um, you know, as a as a new um, new technology, each vendor has their own method of making the rollable ribbons. And most of them have documented the, their methods in their patents. Um, in their patents, so I would suggest if if you're interested in how, how rollable ribbons are made, to to go through the patent records where where um, each company is um, describing how they make their ribbons. Great, thank you. Uh, next. When manufacturing the roll of a ribbon, what are the main successful criteria of concern? For example, bead pattern, fiber crossovers, gaps at bead locations, et cetera. I'm not, I'm more of a cable guy than a ribbon guy. I have seen many papers at IWCS um, from our Japanese colleagues that there are some in-depth um, discussions of this. And um, since I'm not an expert, I think I would, I would refer you back to the IWCS proceedings because there's some good discussion back there over the years um, from, from Japan. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've got time for one or two more, Paul. Um, next. Um, have any disadvantages or new challenges been identified with rollable ribbon cables? You know, it, it, it's a you know, I'm, I'm not going to address that directly because you know, as a um, as a cable component, it. it you know, opens up a whole new spectrum of applications that we can use. Um, as a new cable component, we have to learn how to to put it in the cable and how to process it, you know, optimally. And, you know, what are the challenges today probably aren't, won't be the challenges tomorrow. So I, I'm just going to leave that that on answered, I mean, the challenges will be different depending on different rollable ribbon structures. And, um, you know, it, it's just the same challenges of any high density cable structure as far as controlling excess length and, and making sure you have adequate protection. Okay, thank you. Um, at, at this time, uh, at this time, we're actually out of time. So thank you for answering, Paul. And I would like to thank you for presenting this very interesting and important topic today. Uh, please note the contact points being shown, should you wish to contact Paul after today's event. Each of these IWCS webinar series presentation events are recorded and will be archived on the IWCS.org website. It normally takes up to two weeks for these to be posted. The IWCS webinar series will conduct presentation events on a monthly basis. Webinar events will take place on the third Friday of each month at 10.30 a.m. Eastern USA time. Our next scheduled webinar event will be on Friday, April 19th at 10.30 a.m. Eastern USA time. Each of you will be receiving an announcement for the event a few weeks prior. Please feel free to share our announcements with your colleagues so they can join in and register as well. For over 67 years, the IWCS International Cable and Connectivity Symposium has been the recognized leader showcasing new technologies in cable and connectivity products, processes, and applications. Our next annual international conference will take place on Sunday, September 29th through Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019 at the Charlotte Convention Center in Charlotte, North Carolina in USA. In addition, the third annual UL and IWCS China Cable and Connectivity Symposium 
will take place on Monday, March 25th through Wednesday, March 27, 2019 at the Marriott Hotel City Center in Shanghai, China. Please visit our website at iwcs.org for more event details. In just a moment, you will see a brief survey so that you can provide us your feedback and comments on today's event so that we can further improve this webinar series for you. Thank you for participating and this concludes today's event.